Hi, this is Dr. Habib Ahmed. In today's video, we are going to explore heart prob measurements, a simple and effective method to determine the type of doping in a semiconductor. Now, a more advanced technique is Hall effect measurements, which tells us about the conductivity type, resistivity, mobility, and carrier concentration of a semiconductor film. Hard probe measurements, on the other hand, is a simple technique, a preliminary technique, which helps us identify whether a semiconductor is N-type or P-type by observing how charge carriers move when one side of the material is heated. Now the question is, how does it work? How do we set up the measurement? So it's really simple. You just need three things. Your semiconductor film or your sample, a multimeter and a solder station. So this is how we set it up. First of all, we place the semiconductor sample on a non-conductive surface. Then we place two electrical probes on the semiconductor, one on the hot side and the other one on the cold side. These probes are connected to a voltmeter to measure the voltage difference. Like you can see over here, uh, the probes are connected to contact number 1 and contact number 4. Um, you can also connect the probes to contact number 3 or contact number 4 or you can connect them between contacts 1 and 2 or you can diagonally connect them to contacts 2 and 4 or to contacts 1 and 3 as well. Here in this setup, we have connected them to contacts 1 and 4. Now for the measurement, we got a heat one side of the of the multimeter, one probe of the multimeter, which is a positive probe, using a heat source. And in this case, the heat source is a solder station. We connect the hot probe, we connect the soldering iron to uh, this positive probe of the multimeter. And in this process, the other side remains at room temperature. So initially before connecting the hot prop, you might observe that the voltage is going to be zero volts and after connecting the hot prop, uh, the voltage might either change to a positive voltage as you can see over here or it might change to a negative voltage. So the voltage reading between the two probes tells us whether the semiconductor is n-type or p-type. If the hard probe is positive, the material is n-type, as you can see over here in this case, and the majority carriers are electrons. If the hard probe is negative, the material is p-type, which means that the majority carriers are holes. Um, the hard probe measurement method is based on creating a temperature gradient across the semiconductor sample. Uh, this technique leverages the thermoelectric effect by using a temperature gradient to observe how charge carriers behave in a semiconductor. Now, another question is why do electrons or just holes move from the from the hot probe towards the, the cold probe? Why is it just one type of the carriers, either electrons or holes, they move towards the cold, cold probe? Why not both of them? So this movement of charge carriers is actually driven by thermal diffusion, a process where heat causes the charge carriers to migrate from a region of high temperature to a region of low temperature. And here is why it happens. In the hot region, the charge carriers, they might be electrons or holes, uh, depending on the majority carriers, gain more energy and they start moving faster. And this results in more carriers accumulated in the hot area. Now, since the cold region over here has fever excited carriers, those from the hot region diffuse towards the those from the hot region diffuse towards the cold side to balance the carrier concentration. And the overall movement of these carriers is based on their increased kinetic energy in the hot area. This diffusion of carrier is what generates the voltage difference measured between um, the props. 
once again, the question is why only one type of carrier dominates? Why not both electrons and holes? Both electrons and holes can be thermally excited in a semiconductor, but only one type of carrier, either electrons or holes, dominates the moment during heart probe measurements, primarily because of three reasons. First, uh, because of doping and majority carriers. Like for example, in an N-type semiconductor, the material is doped with donor atoms, which provides electrons as the majority carriers. On the contrary, in case of a P-type semiconductor, the material is doped with acceptor atoms, which creates holes as the majority carriers. Secondly, minority carriers have minimal impact. Even though both electrons and holes can be excited by heat, minority carriers are present in very small numbers compared to the majority, majority carriers. So the contribution of these majority carriers to the overall voltage or current is negligible. So we only see the effect of the majority carriers. Third, thermoelectric effect and voltage. In an n-type material, the majority carriers are electrons and they move from, from, from the hard side towards the cold side. And this causes a positive voltage on the hard side relative to the cold side. In a p-type material, holes are the majority carriers and they move in opposite direction, resulting in a positive voltage on the cold side. Now, because the concentration of majority carriers far exceeds that of the minority carriers, the moment and the resulting voltage are dominant by the majority carriers type. And I personally performed some experimentation of the hard problem measurements on a few samples. Like for example, this sample was magnesium doped gallium nitride N4222. And as you can see that for this sample, uh, on, on the right side, if you look at the uh, hard prop magnitude and polarity, so it's uh, the voltage is minus 16 millivolts and it's, it's showing us p-type, right? Now, as you can see over here, minus 16 millivolts and its conductivity type is p-type. Um, I also performed hard prop measurements on some other samples, like for example, this sample is germanium doped gallium nitride. Uh, germanium acts as an n-type dopant for, uh, for gallium nitride. And from hard probe measurements, I found out a positive potential of uh, plus 0.5 millivolts, indicating it's an n-type semiconductor. Similarly, I performed another comprehensive study of beryllium doped aluminum nitride films. And I performed hard probe measurements for, for a lot of these samples and I, I found out negative potential for these samples minus 90 millivolts, minus 100, etc. Uh, different values for different samples. And the negative potential over here for these samples indicates that this is a p-type semiconductor. And these results are also validated by Hall effect measurements which, which showed p-type conductivity for these beryllium doped aluminum nitride films. So, in um, conclusion, the hard prop measurement is a powerful yet simple technique to determine the doping type of a semiconductor. By creating a temperature gradient, and observing the thermoelectric response, we can easily identify whether the material is N-type or P-type based on which type of carrier, um, whether its electrons or holes dominates the moment. Um, to, to summarize, if um, electrons move from the heart to coal, and uh, the hard prop becomes positive, it shows us positive potential. For p-type semiconductor, holes move from the hot to the cold prop, and the cold prop becomes positive, indicating negative potential across the multimeter. 
This technique is particularly useful in semiconductor research and development as it provides a quick and non-destructive way to classify materials. This wraps up our explanation of hard prop measurements. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss out on anything in the future videos. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more topics related to semiconductor measurements. Thanks for watching. Take care. Adios.